Hey race fan, Brian Davis races, and you can too. Today, my friends, we are at Cross Nationals for the championship race for United States. I am racing in the Masters category, and we're at uh, Contigny, Contigny Park, uh, just outside Chicago, and I'm in row five out of six. That is a challenging hole to climb out of. Wow. <laughs> Okay, I got my wrist being. Now I gotta uh, spend like 45 minutes pinning numbers on, on the jersey. Hey, real quick for the people that are watching this channel and thinking about doing their first cyclocross race next year or their first road race this summer, I just thought of something on the way down. Just to make it very clear, uh, almost everyone gets a little bit nervous, right? So my nervousness has definitely decreased over the years, but today, um, you know, I got butterflies in my stomach. Not a bunch, but enough to be like, I don't feel awesome. And I don't want to eat, which I know is not awesome. Uh, so I'm going to have to force myself to have one of my burritos in a little bit. But I just want to make it clear that that's very normal. Don't let that stop you from racing bicycles. Okay. Nervous. Totally normal. Go check out the course and see what's happening. And I'm trying to figure out if there's any chance to get a pre-ride in. That I don't know. And you'll see it over there, they'll let you right onto the course at the blue oh, tent. I'm gonna go right to course. Clothes, 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 like every item of clothing I own is... Just got back from, uh, <clears throat> I did a I was able to make it over there quickly enough, so... I got a lap in, thank goodness. The course, as I'm sure you're gonna hear from other people that are here, is extraordinarily bumpy. Like, it's crazy how bumpy it is. A fun course, like super small footprint, great for spectating, really well laid out. Lots of twists and turns, some power sections, some handling sections, barrier, the sand right into the hole shot. Mm, I don't know how much I love that. It's gonna boom, that's the whole race right there, essentially. If you make it through there unscathed, or you're not behind 50 people, which I'm gonna be behind 50 people, yeah, that's, uh, that's gonna be game over. Oh well, still fun. <laughs> Okay, three hours later, I got my numbers pinned. It's not that cold today. I think it's like 40, 45 or so. 45, I think it's 45, somewhere in there. Oh God, wore out. Just putting all that stuff on. Get another warm up lap, that uh, Traffic jam in the sand pit. Yeah, traffic jam in the sand pit. You can expect the same in our race. But I'm gonna have better footage. Oh, nice! A nine and 10 year old racers, they're going on Sunday. Ryder and Charlie said hi. He's like, I knew it was you because your car just got redone. <laughs> That's, yeah. All right, I'll take that. I'll take that. Thanks, Ryder. Thanks, Charlie. Good luck, boys. Have fun. Got Magoo ready for the start line. Jacket's gonna come off at the start. I might have one layer too much, according to another racer, but. Tough luck, that's what we're going with. Some guys would clean their bike before they race, but I think those guys, they don't, they're, they're not built the same as me. Intimidate everybody with the battle, the battle look. All right, race fam, we are ready to uh, go up there and race bikes. And most importantly, let's have fun. I know that the sand pit is gonna spike my heart rate. I know that climbing that hill is gonna spike my heart rate. And I'm not gonna be surprised by it. I'm going to have a three deep breaths afterwards, relax, and then keep racing my bike. That's the plan, especially on the first lap. After that, I'll just uh, survive. <laughs> okay, let's go have fun. Woohoo! Race bikes, yeah! Woo! From the Diablo Cycling Team, Brian Davis. I didn't think you could do that. Yay, Brian! Oh, I'm cheering for myself. All right, race fam, let's go racing. We are at the start of Cross Nationals. Pole shot, row five out of six. I am giving her. And I feel like if I would have gotten through this little gap right there, I would have been in a really good shape. But, you know, I'm okay with that start. I gave it I gave it a pretty good amount of juice. I feel like I got up into, I don't know, I probably gained at least, I don't know, five, six spots at, at least in that start. <clears throat> All right, now the uh, whole shot is 
Nice. I really like the whole shot, except for one little thing that we're about to run into here. So sharp left here, a little tiny little gravel bit, and then uh, we're off to the races. So there's going to be a big sweeper to the left here. And later in the race, I found if I really hug the fence, there's some grass that is plenty of grip that I could have railed this corner if I would have pre-rode pre that a little bit more intelligently, I think. So now we're heading into the sand pit, and this is where things get a little sideways. So this guy, wait, wait, where are you going? Left, right, left, right, wait, 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 no, don't stop, you can't stop, you can't stop in the race, you can't stop, you gotta keep going, paddle, 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 why are you stopping, don't stop, don't stop, no, oh, no, no, so, yeah. Oh, right, and then I said, yeah, that could have gone better. All right, now we're up and running, and that, that right there kind of changed how the race was going to develop for me for the rest of the day. So it's okay. Now, I said before the race, like, hey, uh, I'm going to have three deep breaths after that. Do I do that when I get here? No, I don't. I don't have my three deep breaths. I really wish I would have. Another thing about that sand pit is, um, well, I should say the whole shot. Another huge mistake for the race. This was massive. This I didn't even figure this out till I was done washing the bike and putting it away putting it away is when I figured out the mistake that I made for this whole race. Here's what it was. I'm running a two by and in the whole shot when I was doing a pre-ride whole shot uh, practice because it's all asphalt I was like I need more gear than I can get from the uh, from the inside so I'm gonna switch to the big ring I'm gonna do the whole shot and then I'm gonna remember to switch to the small ring. I did not ever remember to do that now, that caused me a lot of lact lactate, uh, lactic, not lactate, no, it didn't cause any of that, but it caused a lot of lactic, <laughs> lactic acid problems that are going to catch up with me about 25, 30 minutes into this race. So anyway, that's the end of the whole shot. Now I'm going to make a, a decent pass here, and then I'm going to show you one thing here. I wish I would have been a little more aggressive on this pass. I came around this person. I was like, oh, I could squeeze into this bear, uh, fence, and I know how this turn works. Like, there's no fast way through here. And you can see I even took that line after all, but I could have gotten around maybe at least one rider there, maybe even two. But it's okay. I really didn't have anywhere to go at this point. So we're going to climb here, and this is one of the most challenging features of the course. The course was super interesting. Like It was like you'd get just enough rest to kind of feel okay about your life, and then boom, something would hit you, whether it's going to be a hill or barriers or uh, a muddy sector, you know, the stairs that were impassable. So here, here is what ended up being a problem. So I could make this hill every time. It was right on the edge of my traction, but I made it every time. The problem was, because I was in that big gear, it was really costing me a lot of uh, muscle power and lungs, because I'm just working my butt off to get up that thing. And, uh, you know, I, I never caught on for the whole day that that was a bit of an issue. So super frustrating. Anyway. As far as features of the course, you're going to get over that uh, Abus Hill, I think they called it, or Abus Mountain, I'm not sure. And then um, and then you got a decent rest section here along this ridge, and then a couple little twisty turnies here. There was a rut here that was real important to be in. That rut was not very challenging. This rut up here, this next turn, was super interesting. So there was like two sections of ruts you're about to see. Here's the first section, very straightforward, but right there in front of my tire, there's like a split in the mud, and you either wanted to choose left or choose right. And again, with the minimal amount of pre-writing, I didn't really catch how that turn worked. So that time I got through it decently, but later on I would bobble there. And then, because you're going straight uphill after that, once I bobbled, oh man, it was just hard to get going again. So there are a couple areas in the course where, you know, the quicker you could start accelerating again, the better off you'd be. Or you're going to come off the, the steps that we're going to see in a minute here. And then it was really a race to see who could clip in and get over the next little power run you know a uh, little hill but being in that big gear there was just no chance that i was ever gonna have the right uh cadence to be able to clip in quick and pop over those little things and then put power down after that so oh well you know the goal of this day was to go down to a nationals level event and get some um just experience with the nationals level event and here's my big takeaway there's nothing overly intimidating about a nationals event it's what when I was driving home, I, you know, left with the basic impression of like, no big deal. Show up to a nationals race. It's just a bike race. I mean, I know that's not rocket science, but like the weeks ahead of it, you're kind of building it up to be this thing that it's just not. It's just a normal race. 
go out there, have fun, race your bike. I mean, we're doing master's category. Nobody here is uh, signing a pro contract after this, so just enjoy yourself, right? All right, these were the steps. That was a, a really tricky part. This was a really important part. If you could clip in and get moving again, you could gain boom, 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 spaces, 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 uh, but I couldn't. And then you can see this guy behind me, and him and I raced together like all day. Apparently we race, um, well, not apparently. I know we race together on the road frequently, so he was uh, putting up a battle all day. Um, and he ran up to that section, and I wish I would have tried that on one lap to get off, run up the stairs, and then just keep running to the next top of the next dip, because it was also probably the stickiest mud section was right after that, right after the Belgian stairs too, or maybe it was leading into the Belgian stairs, but you were still had so much mud on your bike that it was hard to get going, it was hard to clip in, and then you had that hill right away. So anyway, um, so you know, I try to like think about these things how you could apply these to to your race so i guess if you're listening to this and you're thinking about trying cyclocross go talk to your bike shop about setting you up on a 1x uh, system because then you don't ever have to worry about making the mistake that i did which was switching into the small gear a couple other things i learned about the grx system which i just put on and i did have the proper gearing now finally it all came together at the last race i had the grx so i didn't lose my chain and then i had a big fat uh, cassette in the back but I never really got to enjoy it because I forgot to shift the front because I'm kind of dumb so frustrating and you know I want to call myself dumb here because I was given multiple multiple opportunities to know that I was making a mistake by the audience the crowd so when I was climbing a a Abus Hill this guy was great this volunteer he was telling you what position you were in at least the first two laps when he could kind of keep track of stuff that was super cool I think he said I was like the first lap through he said it was like 24th if I heard him correctly, and then after that, things things went poor, <laughs> things went poorly. So, um, man, this course, what are we in here? Ten minutes in, I'm getting one. I'm getting my first lap done. The leader was getting them done in like 8:40, 8:50, somewhere in there. The fastest lap I saw when I was getting ready was like 8:38, 8, 8, 8 uh, which was yeah, somewhere in there. So it'll be super interesting to see what the pros turn in on this course. And they have a couple little tiny bump outs. They're hardly anything um, for the for the pro race that we don't have to contend with, but they're not super challenging. There's one nasty off camber that's gonna take them an extra, I don't know, 15 seconds to get through. So now I'm just gonna run some clips of everyone passing me. So listen to the crowd here, this heckler. Oh, he didn't do it. What's the next lap? So he's telling me, get out of that big gear, get out of that big gear. And instead of me like wondering why somebody's saying that to me, I'm looking around What's going on? The reason I was in a big gear is because what I thought was happening was my GRX was not allowing me to go into my biggest uh, gear in the back. So it was jamming up when I would do that. So I had to get off the bike three times uh, to deal with that. And all three of those times, it never crossed my mind to look at the front uh, front chain ring. So ah, frustrating. So here again, this was after the stairs. I'm get, I have to get off the bike here in a second and adjust my gears. Uh, I was getting lots of build up in the bike, but it never really slowed the bike down. It was just the, the gearing problem. So I was starting to climb up here in the big, but I was cross chaining. That was the problem. Like that was the whole problem. So the GRX thing, um, there's something called synchro mode. The, the Shimano guy told me that in the small gear, it won't allow you to go into the big one, two, three. So that was, I'm sure there's a way to turn that off because that's really dumb. That's why I was using the big gear in the whole shot is because I couldn't get into my 11, 12, 13 on the GRX if I would have left it in the small gear up front. Whatever. <laughs> More things to learn for next year. All right, three to go, and I'm feeling like, oh, how can there possibly be three to go? There's no way I'm going to make I'm, I'm dying. I'm dying in this race. So uh, part of the reason I was dying is my heart rate was just through the roof because I was having to use so much energy to power those big gears over those little... You know, there was no like spinning in this whole situation. Everything was grind, grind, grind. But I wanted to show this clip because I did make it through the sand once, once out of four times, whatever I did, four laps. So here, here we're gonna hear our, our heckler friend. Come on, pedal harder, get out of that big gear. Get out of that big gear. He's telling me. Uh, there's my friends, that uh, Ryder and Charlie. Uh, okay, well, uh, let's see. I think we're going to go back to the sand one more time, and I don't make it. Or do I? No. No, I don't make it. I fell well short that time. Yeah, the power, the wheels are just coming off. And running through this, my I, my legs have never felt so wobbly running in a cyclocross race. It felt like I could barely 
like I want I almost fell over in the sand my legs were just burning and I again I just wasn't putting the pieces together to figure out what the problem was Come on, Diablo. Let's go, Diablo. Get out of that big gear. Get out of that big gear. He tells me again. I still don't do it. All right. That's the end of the race. Thanks for watching the channel. Appreciate it. Go buy some Follow Hollow socks at followhollow.com. I'd appreciate that. Oh, man. What a good time. Thank you, USA Cycling, for putting on the event. I thought it was great. You guys did a great job. All the volunteers were wonderful. So thanks a lot. You guys, tune in. Subscribe. Appreciate it. Bye.